Now we'll move on to active transport. Active transport is a type of transport of substance against a concentration or electrochemical gradient, i.e. from low concentration to high concentration. Therefore, it is often referred to as uphill movement. Active transport requires energy, or ATP, and a carrier protein. And these carrier proteins are known as ion pumps, which has ATPase activity. There are two types of active transport, primary active transport and secondary active transport. Let's discuss those two in a little more depth. The first one we will discuss is primary active transport. In primary active transport, the transportation of a substance across the plasma membrane is directly coupled with hydrolysis of ATP. For example, you could have Na plus or K plus with ATPase or a sodium pump, which is present in all cell membranes, the H plus or K plus ATPase proton pump, which is present in gastric parietal cells and renal tubules, calcium ATPase pump, which pumps calcium out of muscle cells, and H plus ATPases, which acidify many intracellular organelles, namely lysosomes. Though you may wonder, how are these related in a clinical setting? Well, a proton pump inhibitor, such as omeprazole, inhibit H plus and K plus ATPase proton pumps in gastric parietal cells. It is used to treat peptic ulcers, by reducing the acidic content of the stomach, and it allows for the healing of the damaged mucosa. Let's talk about the Na plus K plus ATPase sodium pump. It is found in membranes of all cells in the body. It is the electrogenic pump because it creates a charge separation and a potential difference which moves three positive charges, or three Na plus ions, out of the cell for each two 2K plus ions that it moves in, with a coupling ratio, therefore, of three to two. It is inhibited by Wabayan and digitalis glycosides. It is a heterodimer made up of an alpha subunit, a beta subunit and gamma subunit, Na plus and K plus transport occur via an alpha subunit. The beta subunit is a glycoprotein. The Na plus, K plus ATPase switches between two major conformational states, E1 and E2. Let's talk about those two states. In the E1 state, the binding sites for Na plus and K plus face the intracellular fluid, and the enzyme has a high affinity for Na+. When Na+, binds to the alpha subunit, ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP, with a phosphate being transferred to the aspartic acid, the phosphorylation site. This causes conformational change in the protein, extruding three Na+, ions out of the cell and into the ECF. In the E2 state, the binding sites for the Na plus and K plus ions face the extracellular fluid, and the enzyme has a high affinity for K plus. K plus binds extracellularly, dephosphorylating the alpha subunit, which returns to its original conformation, releasing K plus ions into the cell. This pump uses about 24% of the energy utilized by cells, and in neurons, it uses approximately 70% of cellular energy. The Na plus, K plus pump activity is increased by thyroid hormones, insulin, and aldosterone. Dopamine decreases tubular sodium reabsorption by inhibiting the NaK ATPase in the proximal convoluted tubule, or PCT causing natriuresis. Please note, cardiac glycosides inhibit the Na plus K plus ATPase by binding to the E2P form near the K plus binding site 
on the extracellular side, thereby preventing the conversion of E2P back to the E1 state. Now, let's move on to the calcium ATPase or calcium pump. Calcium ATPase or plasma membrane calcium ATPase, PMCA, functions to remove calcium ions from the cell against an electrochemical gradient. One Ca2 plus ion is extruded for each ATP hydrolyzed. PMCA mainly functions to maintain very low intracellular calcium concentration. The PMCA pump belongs to the family of P-type ATPases, which are characterized by the temporary conservation of ATP energy in the form of a phosphorylated enzyme intermediate, hence the name P-type. The PMCA and the sodium-calcium exchanger, or NCX, are together the main regulators of intracellular calcium concentrations. Calmodulin binds and further activates the PMCA, increasing the affinity of the protein's Ca2 plus binding site 20 to 30 times. Calmodulin also increases the rate at which the pump extrudes calcium from the cell, possibly up to tenfold. It is in the sarcoplasmic reticulum of muscle cells and the endoplasmic reticulum of other cells. These other cells contain different variants of calcium ATPase that pump two Ca2 plus ions for each ATP hydrolyzed from the cytoplasm to the interior of the sarcoplasmic or endoplasmic reticulum calcium sequestration. These variants are referred as sarcoplasmic and endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase or CIRCA, that's spelled S-E-R-C-A. Calcium ATPase functions similarly to that of Na plus K plus ATPase, with E1 and E2 states that have high and low affinities for Ca2+. For PMCA, the E1 state binds calcium on the intracellular side. A conformational change occurs to the E2 state, and then the E2 state releases calcium to extracellular fluids. For circa, the E1 state binds calcium 2 plus ions on the intracellular side, and the E2 state releases Ca2 plus to the lumen of the sarcoplasmic or endoplasmic reticulum. Note, when PMCA does not function properly, it is associated with conditions such as sensorineural deafness, diabetes, and hypertension. Let's talk now about the H plus K plus ATPase pump. The H plus K plus ATPase is found in the apical membrane of the gastric parietal cells and alpha intercalated cells of the collecting duct of the nephron. In the stomach, it pumps H plus from the ICF of the parietal cells into the gastric lumen, where it acidifies the gastric contents. Proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs, for example, omeprazole, cause irreversible inhibition of H plus and K plus ATPase in parietal cells. This causes a complete suppression of gastric acid secretion and increases gastric pH. Now that we've talked about the primary active transport, let's now discuss secondary active transport. The movement of two substances simultaneously across the cell membrane indirectly coupled to ATP hydrolysis is secondary active transport. One substance, usually Na+, moves down its concentration gradient, and this drives the uphill transport of the other substance against its concentration gradient. The downhill movement of Na plus provides energy for the uphill movement of the other solute. Thus, ATP is not used directly. Instead, it is used indirectly by the Na plus ion concentration gradient across the cell membrane. The name 
secondary active transport implies there will be an indirect utilization of ATP as an energy source. Based on the directions of the movement of the uphill solute, secondary transport is divided into two types, co-transport or symport and counter-transport or antiport. We'll discuss both of them now. Let's start with co-transport or symport. This is when the uphill solute moves in the same direction as Na+. For example, Na plus glucose co-transport in the epithelial cells of the brush border of the small intestine, Na plus glucose co-transport and Na plus amino acid co-transport is present in the luminal membranes of the epithelial cells of both the small intestine and the renal proximal tubule. Na plus K plus 2Cl minus co-transport, which is present in the luminal membrane epithelial cells of the thick ascending limb. The other type of transport in secondary transport is counter-transport or antiport. This is the uphill solute moving in the opposite direction of Na+. Some examples of this include Na+, Ca2+, counter-transporter of the heart muscle cells as they move Ca2+, against its concentration gradient as Na+, moves down its concentration gradient. 